Or what is the other uh, plural word? Elohim. Very good. Elohim. Okay, the word Elohim. Elohim. Elohim is a plural word. Okay, it has a plural ending. And this was used by ancient theologians to create a doctrine that God is not one because it ends in a plural form. And that's true that it ends in a plural form. But I would stand for you know the most important prayer in the Bible. And <clears throat> when Yeshua was asked what is the most important commandment, he said, Shema Israel, yeah. hear O Israel, Yehovah, our Elohim, Yehovah is Echad, God, is one. one. So he laid that out very clearly. Then in Zechariah 14, you have, in that day, Yah will be one, and his name will be one. Yeah. So what's up with this word, Elohim, that is in the plural form? Mm. I want to give you an example. First of all, the meaning, the plain meaning of Elohim means a mighty one, okay, mighty one. So Elohim is a word that could be used to refer to one being or one person or also many. For example, in the commandment when it says, you shall not have other Elohim before you, it's the same word. But it's translated as, you shall have no other gods. Mm -hmm. But so why don't we write here in the beginning, gods created the heavens and the earth, if it's in the plural. Exactly. Because it's talking of a singular being. Okay, so now. How do I know that Elohim is, it can be a singular being or a singular person? In Exodus 7.1, the father talks to Moses and he says, I will make you an Elohim to Pharaoh. Okay, so the plural is used here to indicate great power. This if El is a mighty one, Elohim in plural, when referred to one being, it means like a great might. Okay, and we, we will see a few more examples. But I want, I have another uh, verse here in 1 Kings 11.33. It says, it's talking about the Israelites that uh, committed idolatry, and it says, they have forsaken me and have worshipped uh, Ashtoret, the Elohim of the Zidonians. Okay, that Ashtoret is only one, but it's called Elohim, the a plural word, but it means, you know, a great mighty one of the Zidonians. Chemosh, the Elohim of the Moabites and Milcom, the Elohim of the children of Ammon, and have not walked in my ways. Okay, so here we have pagan gods that are just one god that was even like a statue, and is referred to as Elohim, a plural word. There are a couple more examples of different words that are not Elohim, that appear in the plural, indicating greatness. One example, and I decided to spend some time in this because I think that this is an important topic and there is a lot of misunderstandings. Um, you know, and if you know Hebrew, you should know this. You know, because some people take the Hebrew, you know, to people that don't know Hebrew. And then they say, look, this is the plural and you don't know how a plural looks like or how it's used. And then they will uh, create something that I consider a, a non-biblically sound uh, theology. So, um, have you heard before the word Adon, Adonai? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That means master. 
Okay, Adon, Adonai is written like this. Adon. Okay, so many times uh, the father is referred to as Adon or Adoni, Adonai, my master. Adon. Now, there is a verse in uh, Isaiah 19.4 that says, I will imprison the Egyptians in the hands of a harsh lord, and a fierce king shall rule over them. Okay, he's talking about one person that will be a harsh lord. In the Hebrew, that person is referred to as a harsh lord. Instead of Adon, it says, what does it say here? You see the plural? This is translated as Lord. But you see that it should be Lords. But it's talking just about one person. But because it's referring to that person as a person that has great power, instead of Adon, the word is Adonim. So I will imprison the Egyptians in the hands of a harsh Adonim. Okay, it doesn't make sense that the word is in plural unless is uh, ascribing greatness to this person. So that is the idea with Elohim. He's a being that has such greatness that a plural word is used. That that doesn't mean that he is not one. Do you, do you see what I'm yes. saying? Uh, another example comes from Job. Yeah, this is famous. Some, some people believe he's spoken about the Brachiosaurus <laughs> you know, in Job 40. It says, Behold now, Behemoth, you know that, that behemoth, word? Yes. Behemoth, which I made with you. He eats grass as an ox. And yeah. then he goes on to describe uh, what this giant creature does and how he created mm -hmm. it. And, his tail is like a cedar tree. Yeah. It could be speaking yeah. about a yeah. giant dinosaur. We don't know. But this is the point. The name Behemoth in Hebrew is, who can read this? Behemoth or Behemoth. Behemoth. Okay. Behemoth. So behemoth, you see this? What is that? Plural. It's the plural. Plural, yeah. female, yeah. ending. Mm -hmm. Now, how many creatures is this verse speaking of? Just one. Mm -hmm. Because what, how do we know that it's speaking only about one and not many? Behold now, behemoth, which I made you, he eats grass. But it's in okay. the female plural. Exactly. So the same happens with Elohim. Mm -hmm. The word Elohim is a plural word that can be translated as gods. But when it's referred to the Father, to Yehovah, he's talking about one being that has great power. How do we know it's only one? Because when it speaks of Elohim as the Father, then it will always be referred to as He and not they. Or when it uh, is uh, in conjunction with an adjective, that adjective will be in a singular form. Now, a couple more examples on this. Okay, so we are in the word Elohim. By the way, this is called, a, it has a, a name in English, and it's called the majestic plural. Okay, this is a, like just these few cases we spoke about. It's called the majestic plural. Hmm. So, in the beginning, 
is that it's actually, it's actually a reverse in the Hebrew. It says, in the beginning, created Elohim. Okay, so in the beginning, God created. In Hebrew, it's in the beginning, created Elohim. The verb, we didn't study verbs yet, but the verbs, if I say he created, or if I say they created, the verb would be different. In English, it's very easy because it's always the same. <laughs> I created, you created, he created, we created, they created. It doesn't change. It's always created. But in Hebrew, um, it will be different in every single <laughs> case. <laughs> Depending on the uh, pronoun, the verb will be conjugated differently. So when we see the verb here, bara means he created. Okay, so although the word Elohim is plural, mm -hmm. it's talking about a single being because bara means he created. Okay, mm -hmm. the other example is if it has an adjective in Psalm 710, for example, it says righteous Elohim. In Hebrew, is Elohim What does it say here? Sadik Sadik Sadik. Okay, so if I was speaking about gods, okay, I would, I couldn't think about finding righteous gods in the Bible, but just to give you an example, I would add to the adjective the im. Okay, so this would be righteous gods. Elohim, tzadikim, and any other adjective. Mm -hmm. If I say strong, you know, strong God, or uh, almighty God, or whatever. If I'm speaking about the plural being, I will be using a plural adjective, or a plural verb. Okay? Elohim, in this case, is Elohim tzadik. Okay? Because he's talking Elohim is the majestic plural. Okay, when he's speaking about a being of great power, that, that word is in the plural, but that doesn't make a God, the Creator, the Almighty, not be one. Okay, because here, O Israel, Yehovah, our Elohim, Yehovah is one. So scripture can never come against scripture. So some things need to be laid out um, like that. And here is the kick. Okay? Here is where a theological mess uh, comes forth. There are three cases in Genesis that this plurality could be confused. And I tell you where it comes from. The majestic plural is something that didn't exist only in Hebrew. And doing some further research, I saw that even exists in uh, the Far East cultures. Like in India and in China, they have this also. And it's something that was adopted by the British as well. So sometimes the queen this uh, phrase is, um, is ascribed to uh, Queen Victoria. She said, we are not amused. We are not amused. What do you mean we? Mm -hmm. She's talking about herself. Mm -hmm. But because the king or the queen have great power, sometimes they speak of themselves in plural. Mm -hmm. Okay, this sounds weird because it's not something that we use now but it's something that was used in the ancient world 
uh, it was used by the monarchy or dignitaries, sovereigns of countries, lords, and that puts themselves, the person that is using that, in a higher status than a simple I. You know, they are mm -hmm. we. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I see uh, uh, now people uh, preaching or teaching, I say, see, so what, what we are sharing with you today is we? What do you mean we? <laughs> it's the only That's one true. person. That is true. Because, because there's more strength, mm -hmm. more than one. Like with one, mm -hmm. you have this. Yes, one. that could be one. So it's, uh -huh. it's, uh, more power, mm -hmm. more strength. So um, I saw the last time it was used publicly by a monarch, and this uh, was way off, and it stirred a lot of controversy. It was in 1989, the British Prime Minister, not even the Queen, but she was famous, Margaret, Margaret Thatcher, Thatcher. And she said, we have become a grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> and so the people and the press, you know, uh -huh. like, who does she think she is? Because that's something that the Queen would say. But she used that but, yes. majestic plural. Okay, so three cases when there could be misunderstanding. One is in Genesis 1.26. Let us make man in our image. Mm -hmm. Okay, who is talking? Yeah. In the next verse it says, he created man in his image. That's right. You see? Mm -hmm. But from there you get a different theology. Mm -hmm. Just from not understanding mm -hmm. majestic plural. The next one is in Genesis 3.22. It says, man has become as one of us after they ate from the tree. Man has become as one of us, says Elohim. What do you mean as one of us? How many are you? No, it's just the majestic plural. You know, we have become a grandmother. You're just one woman. So in the next verse it says, and he said, not they, you see? So sometimes when he speaks, he will mm -hmm. use the majestic plural, but then the verb and the adjective will all be in singular. And the last case is in Genesis 11, 7. It says, let us go down, when the Tower of Babel, let us go down, and let us mix their language. How many people are coming down? This is the guy speaking, Elohim. Gary teaches that both Yeshua and well, that's what I'm yeah. talking about. Yeah, well, that's right. I'm, I'm, that's I'm, what we so, have been taught. Yeah. That were there at the same. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not going there. I'm just yes. presenting the evidence, <laughs> yes. and then you meditate in your house. Yes, but what you you're saying. Your pastor. Yes. <laughs> yes. What you are saying truly makes sense. And your spirit man identifies with it when you hear the truth. Because I, most likely every one of us sitting here, we have been taught God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit is encompassed within this that you're just referring to. But as you're speaking, for me, I see exactly what it is. I mean, I, I understand what you're saying, yes. but I, I, I believe probably every one of us sitting here has been taught. Oh, yeah.